These are unprecedented times that we're currently living in, and what's happening right now in the stock market is even more concerning. Unfortunately, right now, it seems like things are only about to get worse than they are going to get better, though. Again, from the crazy Russia-Ukraine invasion that's happening right now to the federal government talking about raising rates over nine times this year just to combat inflation. Investors right now are freaking out because the S&P 500 and the overall stock market in general is absolutely nosediving. This is one of the biggest corrections we've seen in the past two years, and it's incredible that we haven't had one already, to be honest. Now listen, while all this is going on, it's absolutely critical that you know all this information and you're well equipped to prepare for whatever could be coming our way sooner rather than later this year. That's one of the main reasons why I really recommend watching to the very end of this video so you don't miss any of the information that I'm about to disclose to you guys. So one of the first things first that I want to talk about right now, guys, is the Russia-Ukraine invasion. From everything that we understand right now, Russia has, of course, officially invaded Ukraine. They've sent their troops and they've conducted numerous military operations. There's been shellings, bombings, and of course, all types of different things going on on all fronts. We've seen tons of casualties on both sides, both the Russian and Ukrainian armies, and we've also seen a lot of, unfortunately, civilian casualties. This has been a very violent conflict so far, and I have a feeling that it's only going to get worse before it gets better. Now, of course, this is a major event that is impacting the overall stock market market as well. We're seeing a lot more bearish momentum than we have ever before. And what's even crazier, guys, is that we just witnessed the death cross here just the other day. A death cross is, of course, basically a pretty significant sign that we're entering into a bear market in the stock market. If you guys actually want to learn how to make money in the overall stock market during a bear market, I recommend getting joined up with our private Discord with the second link down in the description below. This is an amazing tool to use if you want to get more educated on the overall cryptocurrency or stock markets. And of course, start trading alongside us because we send out our are buying sell alerts every day. One of the other crazy things too is that not only was the US stock market affected by this, we also saw the Russian stock market get absolutely hammered. The Russian stock market was down over 45% from its highs, and if you even look at the overall currency of Russia, the ruble, it's absolutely tanking in value as well. One of the big reasons for this is of course all the economic sanctions that are currently being placed on Russia by the United States. And it's not just the United States, by the way, NATO has been putting a ton of their own sanctions on Russia as well. Russia doesn't seem like it's slowing down down anytime soon though and they're only continuing military operations within Ukraine. One of the biggest sanction impacts that we've seen recently is actually the banning of Russian gas imports or basically oil. You might have noticed this of course with gas prices soaring to over five, six, even seven dollars at some specific gas pumps across the country right now. If you drive any kind of big vehicle that does not get good gas mileage, I am so sorry for you. But hey, at least the Tesla people are winning out right now. Now if you didn't know this, surprisingly Russia is actually one of the second largest exporters of oil to the US. So of course, naturally with these sanctions, we're going to see these types of impacts. And that's just on gas prices and real world things. Of course, just wait till we see different types of things in the commodity market start to go up in the overall stock market as well. Again, if you look at the overall price of oil right now, it's jumped to over $100 per barrel since the original Russian attack of Ukraine. That's of course not very good for the overall price of gas and the stock market in general as well. Now there are projections by JP Morgan analysts that say that if these type of attacks and overall military action continues, we can see price per barrel jump to 120 to even $150 per barrel, guys. So again, I don't think gas prices are planning on going down anytime soon until Russia, of course, backs off with this and we see the sanctions go down. If Russia does not back down from this, though, I do worry a little bit about the future of consumer markets and what the prices are going to be at. Even worse than all this, too, we're seeing crazy inflation right now in the United States as well. Again, at the time I'm making this video, inflation is somewhere around 7.5%. That's literally the highest it's ever been since 19. And what's even worse than this is that when you thought inflation wasn't only going to affect overall consumer products, we're going to see things like higher electricity bills, higher gas bills, because of course, the more expensive oil is, the more expensive that your overall electricity or gas bills are going to be as well. We're also going to probably see even more expensive supply chain issues because of course, the chip shortage is still going on. And we're seeing a bunch of other issues with new technology that's being released on a day-to-day -day basis. There's also some interesting stuff going on with cyber attacks right now. Of course, we see a bunch of different payment processing services, financial institutions, and a variety of different companies companies that literally cannot operate because they are some type of hackers that are going around right now taking their systems down. Again, there's rumored that, of course, Russia is doing this. There's nothing confirming that, so please keep that in mind. But again, it seems like it might be a little bit likely due to the fact of everything that's going on right now in the world. Now, again, these cyber attacks are more of a symptom of the 21st century fighting wars. And of course, I think we're going to see more of this before we see less. Now, what's even worse than all of this is that the only way to fight inflation effectively is to essentially raise interest rates, which might sound like a good thing if you like having your savings account as 
higher interest rate, but you have to remember that interest rates are getting raised across the board. This makes borrowing essentially a lot less desirable. And of course, the stock market hates when they raise rates. We've seen it historically happen over and over again. Every time the Fed announces that they're going to raise rates and then eventually do raise rates, we see a decline in overall economic performance in the stock market. So again, while this may seem like I am just screaming from the rooftops that the end is near and that all of this is going to suck, please don't get me wrong. Again, I still think that there is major potential for the US to bounce back from the economic issues that we're experiencing right now. And of course, I think that once the world settles down a little bit with the overall economic events that are happening, hopefully we can start to see some real change. Now, what's even crazier too is that we can look at different analysts who are actually talking or predicting a potential stock market crash that could be happening this year. Jeremy Grantham is predicting that the S&P 500 will crash over 43% here in the coming months due to the inflation crisis. Now, again, whether that's a true prediction or something that holds water still remains to be seen, but this is somebody who has done pretty well predicting different types of crashes in the past. And honestly, guys, to be fully on and to be fully honest with you guys, I'm kind of expecting a crash similar to this as well. Again, I think the overall economic implications of all of this are too hard to not look at. And I think that we are going to see some type of correction or some type of major market pullback in some significant way. We're already seeing the market pullback significantly from its all time highs, and it's only seeming to go further down. Now, again, that doesn't mean that there's no money to be made. That's why in our discord, we trade stocks on a daily basis. We trade options and a bunch of different things to make money, even when the market is doing terrible. One of the benefits of being a trader during a bear market. And of course, if you're a long-term investor, one of the greatest strategies to use during this is to buy the dip. There's going to be a lot of amazing companies that are going to go on sale during this time. If this does happen at all, keep that in mind, it might not. But if it does happen, of course, there is a lot of potential for dip buying. I'm going to look at some of my favorite companies and pick up the dip, things like Apple, Google, Amazon, or even Tesla. And you potentially could have some companies on your mind that you're thinking about picking up in the dip as well. Let me know in the comments below what those would be. And speaking of which, guys, if you want to get on a platform and be ready for that dip when it does come, I recommend getting on public.com. Hit that first link down in the description below, sign up, deposit at least a dollar when you guys make a new account, and you guys will get a free stock that could be worth up to $300. Not only that, but it's an amazing brokerage app to be on in the first place. You can trade stocks, cryptocurrency, and a bunch of different things as well. Plus, you can see what other people are buying and selling in all of those markets, and of course, like social media for investing. Get signed up with that first link down in the description below. Now, please keep in mind, guys, that nobody knows when the stock market is going to crash. Again, this is something that people have been trying to predict forever, and nobody has really ever gotten it right. We can try to play guessing games all day, but again, the most important aspect here is time in the market versus timing the market. You see the difference? Again, statistically, the people who spend more time long-term investing than short-term investing are going to make probably a little bit more money in that instance. Again, don't panic too hard, guys. I think that there is plenty of room for, of course, some bounce backs and potential uprises, but again, I think we need to go through a little bit of pain before we can see those gains that everybody wants to see. Make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button if you guys haven't already, but other than that, I'm Kyle with Finance Bro. Take it easy.